Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Cryptocurrent. Your host here, Richard Carthon. And today I got a very special guest working on a really cool project and working on something that we all definitely can use in the ATM space. We have Ben Weiss with uh, Mr. Coinflip. How are you doing today? Hey, Richard. How are you? Thanks for having me on. Of course. So, um, you know, before we dive into everything, how about you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay. So I'm the chief operating officer of Coinflip. Um, We've been around since early 2015, and we have over um, 1,100 Bitcoin ATMs in 43 states plus DC. So I've been in the Bitcoin space for a while, and we think the ATMs are the best way to get as much Bitcoin to as many people as possible. Awesome. Well, thank you for that background and pretty impressive that you're already, I mean, that you're in 43 states, been around for the last five years. So I'm sure you have all kinds of great stories to to share with uh, the ups and downs of building a, a business during these times. But, you know, what was your first introduction into the cryptocurrency and blockchain space? So I originally got into Bitcoin in school and I didn't really have a tech background. But the one thing that really got me into Bitcoin at first was the asymmetric payoffs of it, where I was like, you know, who cares if I lose a little money investing into it? If this project works, the upside is so big that it's more risky not to have Bitcoin. So I started getting into Bitcoin and it was only about a couple of years later that I really did a deep dive into the tech. And I was like, holy crap, this is going to change the world. This is going to change finance. This is going to change banking. Um, So that's at first I just thought it was a good bet (laughs) to make. Right. Uh, I, I agreed. And it, it's really cool that you're able to get in as early as you were. And you just saw the, the upside. Just like you said, there was, you know, worst comes to worst. Maybe I lose what I put in, but if I don't, then it could be life changing. It could be game changing. And, and, you know, on that on that matter, you know, what made you decide to specifically get into the Bitcoin ATM space? So, uh, you know, I know that you've been around since 2015. I know there are probably some other competitors in the space back when you were starting, but you know, what made you want to start CoinFlip? Mm-hmm. So one of my business partners, uh, Daniel Pulaski, he, so I was into Bitcoin. I was buying all this Bitcoin and he was a Bitcoin trader. If you remember localbitcoins.com, um, that was, you know, a site where you could do cash for Bitcoin back in the day in person. And he was doing that. And, you know, he was getting so much demand for trades. He was like, I can't be in, you know, 20 different places at once. So he bought a couple Bitcoin ATMs and he basically just started putting them around in, you know, Lincoln Park in Chicago, Lakeview. And they were actually really bad ATMs back then. Like I remember it would take, you know, 30 minutes to put all the cash in because it was so slow with the validator and everything. But the concept was really good. And that kind of teamed up since there. Uh, we have two other business partners, Chris and Alan, and you know we've been in it ever since. Yeah, so let, let's kind of walk through that, right? So, of course, there's been an evolution in the amount of technology for, for Bitcoin ATMs. Just like you said, when you first started, it took like 30 minutes to make a transaction. How has the user experience with your particular machines um, improved over time? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, the machines back then, I thought it was... In, like, Bitcoin was always very hard to get, so... I thought it was an improvement, you know, in 2015, but looking back, I'm pretty like stunned how bad the machines were at first. I mean, it was slow for all the cash to come in. So we upgraded all the validators. We upgraded the user interface so, you know, customers can register in a minute, two minutes, get their Bitcoin right away. Uh, we upgraded a lot of the graphics. We made the screens bigger. So it was kind of a uh, trial and error. So we would go to the ATMs every week and we would just do transactions ourselves. So we could be like, okay, this was easy. This was hard. This is what needs to get improved. Um, because I th- think a lot of people put down the ATMs and they never actually went to their own locations to see how they were doing. Right. Uh, I mean, which is really cool. And just to see like how it has progressed as far as it has and to know that like, hey, this is very needed and that you know, for some people, they're going to be more comfortable with going to a physical machine to be able to get Bitcoin. So like, I, I guess, can you kind of speak to that? Of, of of course, there's a little bit more access than when you first started online and being able to like go to an exchange, potentially get Bitcoin. Uh, whereas like now, obviously, uh, you, you, you kind of have options of whether you want to go to exchange or you want to go to physical ATM. Kind of walk us through, um, you know, 
who are the typical people that are, are using this and like what are some of the best use cases of, of why I would want to come use one of CoinFlip's uh, machines? Mm-hmm. Well, I think the whole industry, you know, exchanges, ATMs has just gone, you know, so far since 2015. And I think the more options there are to buy Bitcoin, the better for everyone. So I'm very excited about how much progress has been made industry-wide since 2015. But the ATMs still play a key role because I think 15 to 25% of Americans are unbanked or underbanked or only have cash. And, you know, they can't use Coinbase or bank transfers to get Bitcoin. Our customers are are anything from, you know, first-time crypto users to uh, people who are more comfortable with in-person or, uh, you know, going to a location and putting in cash than, you know, signing up online, linking their bank account. And we really uh, try and provide Bitcoin to the underbanked communities and unbanked communities. And our average transaction is a couple hundred dollars. For a lot of people, you know, it, it could be hard to do a wire transfer, an ACH, or to link their their uh, bank account for, you know, $200, $300 transaction. Yeah. And and that's really cool, man. The the fact that you are again helping the bank, the unbanked, and give opportunities to some some people. Uh, I've re- uh, previously spoken to a uh, another owner of a Bitcoin machine, and one of the use cases he said of when he figured out like this was useful is that you have a lot of people who would have like um, cards. They would get like these gift cards, and they would want to like trade them in. For, for crypto. Um, mm. Tell me a little bit about like, what are the various ways that users could come to your uh, Bitcoin ATM and, and use it? Like, what are some of the various use cases? Mm-hmm. So the ATMs are cash only, but a lot of the, uh, we do sell gift cards for crypto online as well. We also take credit and debit online. But the main use case for the Bitcoin is, you know, for the underbanked for remittances, I know people will, uh, buy Bitcoin and then send it to their relatives in their home country, such as Mexico, you know, Panama, and that's easier and quicker than Western Union. So remittances are a big use case. First time investors are a big use case. You know, people who have gift cards or want to go in and out of Bitcoin from a different sort of things, the ATMs are the quickest way to do it for sure. And for mass adoption, I mean, Coinbase is great. We love Coinbase. That's one of the reasons we started CoinFlip. Um, But in terms of customer-facing mass adoption, I think it's really cool that when you, know, when you walk into a gas station or a mall or a convenience store, for people to actually see these Bitcoin ATMs, I think is it's advertising and marketing for the whole entire industry, not just for coin flip. For sure. And, and, and you're right. It's just a, another way, just a constant reminder when you look out and it's like, wow, I can go get cryptocurrency right now using this machine. Um, very powerful. And, and also... Another thing that I guess someone asked me one time when they were looking at one of these um, ATMs at a, at a at a gas station was, you know, how intuitive would you say your machine is? Do you think you have to be, you know, pretty technologically aware or anyone that has used any kind of ATM ever could come and reasonably figure this out pretty quickly? Anyone can use it. It's super easy. We have 24-7 customer support, which no other companies have. In case you know you are having issues, but it's pretty self-intuitive. You know, you can do the transaction two minutes, be done, and it's way better than it was in 2015. I mean, we've, we've had five years to really perfect the customer experience. You know, we have thousands of transactions every day. We get feedback from customers, and we adjust our process and our user interface to meet that feedback. And I'm super proud of the product we have. Amazing. Well, we'll definitely appreciate that. Thank you for letting us know about, you know, coin flip and, you know, with with you being in the space for the last 5 years just with this company, but obviously being in much longer, we have seen a ton of new opportunities slash like things that have just come in this space, right? And I would say that, you know, in 2020, we've seen new things such as like DeFi and a lot of other movers and shakers that are like kind of sh- shaping the future trajectory of, of cryptocurrency and blockchain. You know, what is something in the, I, want, I would say in the near future, let's call it the next six months to two years that you think uh, that you're looking out for that you think others should be aware of as well? Well, I think you hit the nail on the head. And one of the interesting things is I think after 2017, you know, the price went up to 20000 then it went down. You kind of saw a lot of lost interest in Bitcoin and crypto, but all the cool projects were still going on. There was still so much innovation 
behind the scenes that people didn't really pay attention to because, you know, the price went down the price and the price and the news wasn't there to keep it in people's minds. But like in anything in life, the results always lag, you know, beyond the effort. They always lag behind the effort and the work. So all these cool projects have been being worked on for years and years. And I think you're just starting to see the DeFi and the asset back lending and a lot of other cool projects really starting to have practical use cases. And people are like, oh, this kind of happened overnight, but people have been working on this for years. And what I'm really interested in the next six months is DeFi and, you know, asset backed lending. You have Bitcoin, you don't want to get out of your position. So you put up your Bitcoin as collateral, you get cash, you can use that to buy a house, pay your bills, whatever. And you don't have to sell your Bitcoin like you would have had to in the past. Right. And that's, I think that's so powerful. Whole, you're having oh, a ahead. whole parallel financial system. You know, because a, a whole fight, what is a financial system? You know, it has deposits, it has lending, it has lines of credit. And I think you're starting to see that traditional finance system that, you know, we see with the US dollar starting to pop up and be used with Bitcoin. And I think that is awesome. Really cool stuff. Yeah, the, you're, start, you're, you're starting to get the entire financial institution that creates wealth and that just allows for cash flow to happen. So, you know, when cryptocurrency originally came out, in a lot of ways, when Bitcoin was created, um, storage of value. It was another, it was a digital currency that was, you know, being... Yeah, people just of, hold it, but it wasn't, there wasn't a whole financial system and economy around it. Like there Exactly. Is there wasn't a need to be constantly trying to buy and sell and, and put out there and have an entire ecosystem. Whereas now we are finally getting to a point to where y- you have not just Bitcoin doing it, but an entire ecosystem of all, all these other cryptocurrencies just trying to create a, their own little fine institution, decentralized fine institutions in ways, which I think is extremely powerful. One, with helping bank the unbanked, but then two, creating financial opportunity for any and all to start creating some financial wealth for themselves who usually wouldn't have access. Yeah, think about how many people, you know, the legacy financial institutions have left out and the governments tried to make rules to make it more inclusive and stuff like that. But I think Bitcoin is and other cryptocurrency projects, this is really the first time where there's an actual shot of the financial system being fully inclusive for everyone. Right, which I think is exciting. And I think you you do as well. Um, I guess just another add-on question to that is, you know, even though you, you have things like DeFi that's on the horizon and, and other things as well, like what do you think are going to be, you know, very important things within this like next decade uh, for the cryptocurrency and blockchain community to, to continue to grow, to get closer to mass adoption? I think there needs to be some more regulatory clarity. For instance, you, I think it's pretty obvious the next Apple, the next Amazon, the next huge company is going to be something blockchain based. And at this point, I think that next company is more likely to be in Asia than the US because I think the US hasn't provided the regulatory clarity that's necessary, but we're taking some good steps there. And I think you know, making sure everyone knows what the rules are and that there's clear rules will help foster innovation in the industry. And I think there's definitely steps in the right direction. I know the government is working on allowing banks and other institutions to, you know, custody Bitcoin because that was one of the big issues that was holding up a lot of innovation was all these uh, very crazy rules around custody that wouldn't necessarily fit with Bitcoin. And that was keeping a lot of institutions out of the space. But as you see now, in the last couple of weeks, a ton of huge corporations have been adding Bitcoin to their yeah. balance sheet because they, they realize it's more risky not to have it than to have. No doubt, man. And especially when you're just looking at the amount of inflation in the United States, we're about to be for the first time since the Great Depression having more debt than actual money and like value. And yeah, when- more debt than GDP, I think. I think they said the deficit tripled since the coronavirus started. Insane. Yeah. yeah. Just within within almost what, eight months or, or what have you, just like just outrageous amount of, of debt that just entered. And of course, you know, as much as we want to think that we're not a global economy, the US dollar kind of feeds the global economy, which then means I mean, it's that like currency, at least for now. Exactly. And then, you know, what is a good potential hedge against all of that? Cryptocurrency slash Bitcoin is looking very appetizing. And so for everyone listening, again, great time to be in this space, be figuring this out and putting your head down and just grinding through because the way that I originally looked at cryptocurrency, and tell me if, if you view this differently, it's either going to be 
where it's going to crash and burn and be nothing, or it is going to be big. I don't think there is middle ground. Like I don't think. Yeah, there's no middle. And like that's what is exciting to me, and exciting to listen to various projects that are out there and people who went and found ways to capitalize and and be in this space and make it their own to then also still go out and help people because like almost everyone I brought on this show, like ultimately you are servicing other people and help educating and bringing opportunities to them that regularly weren't there. Like you are providing um, ATMs where people can literally go spend or send money to loved ones overseas without having to do all the the cost and the time and everything else, or just having access to getting cryptocurrency, even if you don't have a phone, like just having a way to do it, which I think, again, is very, very cool. Yeah. I mean, there's so many things going on in the space that are just amazing. I don't think we're going to fully see the facts for another three to five years, but all the work's being put in now, 100%. Awesome, man. Well, uh, I really appreciate you joining me today and just sharing all this, like, just breadth of knowledge and just your experiences throughout all of it. But, you know, what is a final thought that you want to leave with all of our listeners here today? Well, Bitcoin's here to stay. It's more risky not to have Bitcoin than to have Bitcoin. And for anyone who is worried about what's going on in the world and the economy and you know they want to you want to safeguard your wealth you want to safeguard your family i think you have to own some bitcoin and maybe i'm biased because i've been in it for five years but i think the value of bitcoin of cryptocurrency of you know a parallel economy that the people uh, control and have access to you know i think it's it's amazing. And I think everyone should be involved, whether it's just holding a couple hundred dollars of Bitcoin or working on some cryptocurrency project. I think there's an opportunity for everyone, whether it's small or big, there's something that everyone can do to be part of this really financial revolution. Agreed. I think that's a great final thought for everyone listening. Uh, Get involved if you aren't already. Uh, if this is one of the first times you're hearing about us and are trying to learn more about the space, we have a ton of great educational content for you on the website, also through our podcast. And also, if you're listening, make sure you go on our YouTube channel. You can watch this amazing interview and you can see uh, Ben's face and see how all of the cool things that he's got going on. Um, but Ben, thank you for that final thought. What are some ways that people can learn more about CoinFlip and also learn more about you? Mm-hmm. So uh, CoinFlip.tech, that's our website. Hopefully there's an ATM close to you. There should be our goals to have ATMs within 10 minutes, uh, driving distance of everyone. Our Twitter, Instagram handle is a coin flip ATM. My Twitter is Ben coin flip. And I really appreciate you having me on Richard. And I think there's still so many more cool things that we're going to see in the next couple of years. Agreed. Again, I appreciate you joining me today. And for everyone listening, stay crypto current. Hi, everyone. Thanks for listening to another episode of Cryptocurrent. For more information on this episode and all of our episodes, please visit us at www.crypto-current.co. Stay up to date with the latest news in cryptocurrency. You'll receive daily emails Monday through Friday that are personalized and curated content specific to you and your interest, powered by artificial intelligence. Are you an accredited investor looking to invest in cryptocurrency? Crescent City Capital can help. Go to crescentcitycapital.com for more information. If you're finding value in our content, please take five minutes to leave a five-star review and a great comment. Also, please make sure to share this podcast with others. Hello, everyone. I hope you're enjoying the quality of this podcast. I can only thank my amazing producer, Andrew DeRitter, with DeRitter Productions, who has put this together. If you have any podcast, visual, or video needs, please go to deritterproductions.com. That's D-E-R-I-T-T-E-R productions.com. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Crypto Current with Richard Carthon. We'll be back with more exciting developments from the world of blockchain and cryptocurrency next week. But until then, stay crypto current.